participated as well, Lauren, in a corn shucking race. I finished last. Is there strategy to corn shucking? We have a corn shucking insider, Greg Amsinger himself, starting from the top of the stalk and trying to shuck down. You gotta break the stem off first, which kind of loosens the rest of the sheath around the corn. They've changed the seed with even more kernels per ear. How will it be different than last year? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Claudia, with that editing, you nailed it. J.P. Morosi. I have to remind J.P., we're on broadcast television. You can't be talking about shucking and, and sheaths and stems. It's a family morning. For goodness though, sake, JP. sir. Good morning. That kind of knowledge only comes with the Harvard education. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I, I'm not sure how I can recover during the rest of the segment here. I'll do my best. But, again, I, I probably have to go back to the farm that I worked on when I was a teenager to improve my – my technique. I mean, I need to go back back home to Michigan and work on this. But no, to, to be fair, Lauren, uh, there are always new things to learn here at the Field of Dreams. And I want to make this point. We're here. The corn is a little shorter than it was last year, but it is hardier, more kernels per ear. The yield is great. And the morning, I'm going to tell you this, I've been here on many mornings, Lauren. This might be the most beautiful day I yeah. have ever seen at the Field of Dreams. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen this evening. Well, it's still and peaceful, is it? Joey Votto is on his way, and he has made statements about how much this game means to him. Tell us more, JP. Lauren, it really is a remarkable story for Joey Votto. Of course, he grew up in Toronto, Ontario, and he spoke yesterday at length, a beautiful Twitter thread about the meaning of this film in his childhood. He talked about how he and his family didn't have that many VHS tapes at home growing up, but this Field of Dreams was one of them. And he watched it a lot with his father, played a lot of catch with his father, and he said this movie makes him go back to think about what life was like when he was eight or nine years old growing up in Toronto and learning the game from his father and Joey also shared of course his father passed away in 2008 and that now coming back to this place and to reflect on the movie for him makes him think about his dad makes him think about his earliest years in the game learning baseball by watching this film and by playing catch with his father and so Lauren you think about the perspective that comes later in a player's career I, I believe Joey Votto is going to be in the Hall of Fame so when he steps on this field to play against the Cubs tonight and play first base and be out here, there is no doubt he'll be thinking about his father, Joe, and all those games of catch going back more than 30 years. And hang out with your kids. They remember it. That is the moral of the story. That's what I took away. We will bring you Joey Votto's exact comments coming up. He's played 16 years, and that matters to him. It also matters for one of their catchers. Local story. Tell us more. Lauren, Michael Popersky made his Major League debut earlier this year. Actually was drafted by the Houston Astros five years ago. Made his debut with the Giants. That's the same team as Moonlight Graham, of course. And then he was able to move on now to the Reds. And how about this story for Michael Popersky and his family? Popersky grew up in the Chicago area. Lamont, Illinois was his high school. And now Popersky goes from playing on the fields of Illinois, not that far from here, to playing against the hometown team that he grew up cheering for. He grew up a Cubs fan there in Lamont, Illinois. He was born in Palos Heights, Illinois. And now he's got a chance to come here to the Field of Dreams as now a member of the Cincinnati Reds and play against the favorite team he had as a kid. You think about dreams, Lauren, for Michael Papierski and his family. What a dream it's going to be to be here in his native Midwest and to drive these roads. I remember hearing from DJ LeMahieu last year as he was coming into to Dyersville, Iowa, that for him, the roads and the cornfields looked a lot like the roads that he had driven growing mm -hmm. up in Michigan. I am sure Michael Papierski is going to have the same emotions today pulling into Dyersville to play against, yes, his hometown Chicago Cubs. Oh, wow, so cool. And everyone's in good company, JP. Legends of the game. I saw Frank Thomas and Johnny Bench. Give me a who's who. Give me a rundown. You know, Lauren, that to me is going to be the key question tonight is perhaps who comes out of the cornfield as part of the ceremonies this evening. And we do know this, as you mentioned, Johnny Bench is here. So that makes at least two Hall of Famers on the premises right now. Of course, Frank Thomas, part of the ownership group of the Field of Dreams now. And Johnny Bench, I love that look on his face coming out of the corn. We saw him just a couple weeks ago, Lauren, at the Hall of Fame. He loves the game so much. He is still so connected to the game. And when you think about the history of 
both organizations. The Cubs have a long history here in the state of Iowa. They're AAA affiliated in Des Moines, so there's a lot of Cubs fans who live in the state of Iowa. And the Cincinnati Reds, as we know well, when you go to that beautiful ballpark in Cincinnati and you look behind home plate, it says the oldest continuing operating baseball club in America. And so now we, we know, of course, Johnny Bench here to represent that legacy as a Hall of Famer. I think we may see and hear from Johnny Bench later today. We'll take a moment. Just breathe it all in, JP. Enjoy this game tonight. It is on it's Fox. Incredible. Thanks, That's Lauren. That's right. What an awesome assignment.